You don't really think of the ocean being a noisy place, but it can get pretty rambunctious down there sometimes. One of the chief troublemakers and Loudman extraordinaire is the Pistol Shrimp. He's great at parties, but he makes for a bad tenant. With a snap that would put the Mad Titan to shame, this high decibel decapod can stun and even kill its prey. Life may be hard for most, but hunting and surviving are just a snap for the Pistol Shrimp here in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's it's 30 minutes of interesting animal info for you. I was just thinking about it. I'm like, yeah, it still is. I was at the edge of my seat wondering if I if it was still interesting animal info. It still is, and I'm Joe. I'm still Joe. I'm very happy because I'm Carlos. And today we're talking about a small fry with a loud personality and the fastest draw this side of the Mississippi. And the other side, too. But more on that later. Well, they're also all over the place. But also... Even if you're on one side of the Mississippi, you're on the other side, technically, just a lot longer away, yeah. farther away. So you are both east and west from me. Yeah. Just a lot more west than east. Yeah. I'm a little turned around. This deluxe studio kind of gets me, like my cardinal directions all messed up. That's so, right. So we're talking about the pistol shrimp. That's right. Because it has, because this is the only um, crustacean that actually um, owns and carries firearms. <laughs> It's a gun advocate and enthusiast. Second Amendment pistol shrimp. <laughs> it does not conceal this carry, though. It can't. It can't. This is it's very difficult. It doesn't have any pockets. But uh, so you want to talk about where it lives in taxonomy, and I'll talk about where what I want to say about it. Sure. Because uh, this is this is my favorite binomial nomenclature of all time. Okay, here we go. It's in the kingdom. We've cut, become pretty familiar with by now. Ooh, ooh, I know this one. All right. Never mind, I don't. <laughs> well, it's Animalia. Dang it, I knew it. <laughs> I just got to tr- I, I, I second guess myself all the time, you know? Uh, it's in the phylum has a, having a spine, Arthropoda. That's not true. That's the opposite of true. It's not true. Which is false. Not having a spine. Yeah. Well, that's also not. Having an exoskeleton. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Uh, it's in the subphylum, my, the, and also the name of my first daughter, Crustacea. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, people are going to send your first daughter money just, just in, as pity. Studies show that, uh, girls handle having weird names better than boys. That's something I heard someone say and did not read or fact check. <laughs> But I, still, she's going to be called crustacea. I don't really have very much to say about that. <laughs> well, let's talk about, let's go to class. All right. The bell's ringing. And the name of the class is Malacostraca. We've been here before. We have, which is the only reason I know how to pronounce this. Yep, same here. On the first try. Uh, the order is Decapata. Nice. Do you want to talk about an infra order? Because if you do, it's Ceridae or Caridae, depending on how you pronounce that first C. It's probably a soft C. Uh, the family is Alpha Alphiidae, Alphiidae, Alphiidae. Yeah, that sounds right. And here we go. We're getting into it. The genus. Yep, yep. Is Synalphilus? Synalphius? Synalphius, yeah. Synalphius. And the species. I don't know how to pronounce this. Say it. Say it. Or the, let's do the full, full binomial name. Synalphius Pink Floydy. Pink Floydy. <laughs> no stutter. I hope you know why. That's a real thing. You, you don't know why? Just because of the way it looks? Yes, just because of the way it looks <laughs> and when it was discovered. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Pink Floydy. It's just tax, taxonomy is crazy. Well, but we, you can just do that. You can do anything. Yeah. <laughs> but that the scientific community is like, sure, you discovered it. <laughs> you could have named it whatever you want. Can you name it something obscene? Does, uh, who ratifies these things? Congress? <laughs> okay. I don't know. Congress. <laughs> uh, but clearly, there it's just the Wild West. You could just name it whatever you want. And as long as everybody agrees that yeah. that's the law, that's the law. True. Turns out scientists can be nerds for more than one thing. Like shrimp and also and 70s rock, rock bands. Yeah. So uh, we're going to call it here the, the Sonic Slayer and Pistol Pete. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Those are my two uh, nicknames. What's next? <laughs> Let's get into the uh, general info reporting for Dooney. Dooney? Yeah. Dooney. Anyway, let's get right into the the generalissimo info. Let's talk about the family Alfiadae in general. Uh, the family lives all over the world's oceans, particularly in coral reefs. That's in, where I would want to live if I lived in the ocean. But the, you can't. It's hard to pass up some good sea grasses. I can totally agree with that. And uh, oyster reefs. Mm, no. You know what that is? Sure. It's oysters on top of oysters on top of oysters. That was aggressive. <laughs> it's just a bunch of oysters. <laughs> and it becomes a reef because there's so many. The ones underneath have to be, like, dead, right? Probably. It's just a pile of corpses with the struggling, decaying, dying, uh, you know, the the living that sh- are strewn yeah. across the top. It's a city on top of a city on top of a city. Nice. Like, like Futurama. The, yeah, I was just going <laughs> to say that. Yeah. Uh, and Zoidberg comes from the planet Decapata. <laughs> Uh, anyway, they like those places because there's lots of, uh, hiding spots because mm-hmm. they're hiding, hide and seek masters. Um, the family includes 38 genera, which is the plural of genus. We've talked about this before. Mm-hmm. Uh, and most prefer warm and temperate water, but one genus lives in cold water and one lives in fresh water. So these guys live almost everywhere. You know, yeah, yeah, like they, like some like mid century country singer that yeah has, they, cla- has made outrageous claims. They go over the entire earth, like some country singers go over the entirety of North America, and by North America, I don't mean Canada <laughs> <laughs> or Mexico, or maybe Mexico, but there's one place where this where Pistol Pete is not. And according to the journal Zootaxa, the pistol shrimp is unlikely to be found at the dark side of the moon due to lack of suitable habitat. An academic journal said that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I feel like I could write an academic journal at this point. It was the 70s. (laughs) It was indeed. Uh, Let's describe it for the people. All right. Let's do it. The pistol shrimp is about the size of your finger. That's it. Which finger? Good question. I think the pinky. I'm looking at the length. <laughs> this is really going to help me later on. Yeah, about the, <laughs> it's about the pinky. A pinky to the... It, the range is between a pinky and a, and a, and a middle. Okay. That's, uh, that spans the entire range of your finger lengths. That's why I said a finger. <laughs> <laughs> um, the family comes in a variety of colors and patterns, but the Pink floyd variety is like translucent. It's got like tan colors, but then the, the one claw is like a, a neon reddish pink. Yeah. Like a hot pink. And that means Pink Floyd. It's like you blew an oily bubble of this guy, and then it just solidified and became this this shrimp man. I'm having a hard time imagining what that means. You know like those oily bubbles with the with the rainbow colors? And it's kind of and it's translucent? I don't know, but oily bubbles is the name of my next band. So Crustacea <laughs> is gonna is gonna be the the, the keyboardist in yeah. oily bubbles. <laughs> the fan oily the oily bubbles family band yeah (laughs) pistol pete and the oily bubbles there we go uh but i feel like i just said the size of it and you're having difficulty kind of imagining no i got it it's a it's a it's between the the middle finger and the pinky I, i don't need any other help we can move on no let's uh let's get a little bit more specific in the pacific uh and the atlantic and the indian yeah but that brings us to... But not the Ocean of Storms. The, the <laughs> Or the Sea of Tranquility. Sea of tranquility. <laughs> um, so, Although neither of those are on the dark side of the moon. That's true. We don't know what's on the dark side of the moon. It's a mystery. It would, it's just... It's, it's not. too dark there. We can't see. Uh, let's, let's move into the listener's most favoritist part of the show. The part of the show that's introduced by you, uh, the listener. So if you want to introduce the show... 
All you got to do is record yourself saying, speaking, screaming, chittering, we've established, but also whispering. Singing works, yeah. Yeah. Whistling, I guess you could try to whistle that. Yeah. Um, Don't (laughs) mime it. It's it's not going to go over well in an an audio audio medium. Yeah. Also, you can bark it if you're so inclined. True. If that's your only means of communication, then we'll accept a bark. Yeah. Uh, A a well-timed bark. Anyway, to finish that sentence, measure up. (laughs) Saying, sing those words. Measure up. Yes. <laughs> uh, but today we are introduced by the the artist for the show. None other. None other than our friend Brian. Zana Namaru. <laughs> who is, you can find at X Namaru. After the X, it's all phonetic. On Twitter. Without further ado, three, two, one. Wow, Brian, that sounded very artistic. <laughs> You're like a recording artist yeah. as well as a visual one. Yes. Uh, let's jump right in to the length. Uh, length, death, and taxonomy. Three to five centimeters. Pinky slash middle finger size. A.K.A. in these amber waves of grain, 1.2 to 2 inches. Let's round that out to about 1.6 inches. How many shrimp go into the into Forrest Gump's run in the movie Forrest Gump? No. Go ahead. Here's a hint. <laughs> <laughs> a panel of experts analyzed Forrest Gump's run for a story written by Lauren Hansen in capital letter the, or capital letter T, the, capital letter W, week, the week, and found that though he risks foot and bone injuries, the, f- the fictional run is possible. They also said... Tom Hanks runs with perfect form. All right. Well, that went like what? Across the country? Something like that. Eventually just stopped and turned around and went home. Spoiler alert for that movie. By the way, if you want to read the full story about this and how they determined whether it was possible, yeah, there will be a link Okay. on ldtaxonomy.com. I don't know. 500 miles? That seems like a, like the, the longest. Do you remember the how do you remember the run? Do you remember the scenes? Nope. Not really. I'll you give know, you a you know an what, actual hint. You know what it's been so long since you've seen a movie and it only boils down to like screenshots in your head? That's that's this movie to me. Do you want to know a real hint? In the movie you see him running to the ocean and turning around more than twice. So what is <laughs> the the implication is that he he cr- did cross country twice? I mean that's gotta be like what is it, 4,000 miles from, like, the East Coast to the West Coast? That seems like something that you would not be able to do. Well, he he just, he's not, he's not doing it endlessly. All right, well, let's say he goes to, he goes there and back again, like Bilbo Baggins, for 8,000 miles. Uh-huh. Which is, a, the guess that I'm going off of is the width of the United States. 350 million! I'm done. I okay. did. That's my, that's my guess. Okay, so... Forrest Gump runs from so they in this article they traced his route on Google uh, Google Maps. He goes from Alabama, sa- like across the South, across Texas, to looks like Southern California, and then up to Maine, di- like diagonal up to Maine, and then straight across the North to Northern California, and then through the middle again, and ends in Mississippi. So that's 12,000 miles. Okay. And... They say that's possible. They say that's possible. Uh, so the answer is 475 million. 200,000 miles. I was not that far off. You were... If I had, gu- if I had guessed 12,000 miles, then I would have gotten it right. Yeah. I suppose. That's typically how it is. The variable so, no, you some, don't know is the one you get wrong. Sometimes my math is way off, though. That's true. <laughs> my head math. All right, that was fun. That was only our first one. We have a whole other one. Oh, my goodness. This is great. <laughs> I've got tons of major <laughs> info on this, too. Major uh, facts. Okay, family size. They have about... There are about 100... I'm number illiterate today. 1,119 species in the snapping shrimp family. Snapping shrimp is another name for the pistol peats. Uh-huh. 
how many of the largest species, largest family in the world goes into pistol shrimp? I can't read anymore. <laughs> 1,119, you said? Yeah. So how many of those, how many of the largest family in the world go into the families of the snapping shrimp? Largest living blood immediate relatives? Yeah, so here's the hint. Is that how that it's works? actually kind of helpful. The family of the family of the father Zayana Chana are from Bak Twang. Oh man, that sounds like I'm butchering it. Because <laughs> <laughs> you are. But that B A K T W A N G Bak Twang or Bak Twang, India. And live they live in a hundred room house, so it's it's just the people that live in his house. And I'm not including, uh, I'm including the parents and the kids, not including the grandkids or the kids' spouses. So just the immediate family. Okay. Two generations. So the parents are two. We'll go with that. Maybe. Oh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Several, yeah. Let's see. there's a max of... Of five there for the parents. Okay. Um, and... You can also read more about this by clicking on a link at ldtaxonomy.com. Let's say he's Genghis Khan level of fertile. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's say 30. It's a good, it's a good strong number. It seems like a lot. If you've got... If you've had five spouses and 25 kids, I feel like that's a lot. That's a decent amount. Um, thanks for your vote of confidence. Largest family in the world. 30 people, huh? Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Notable. Notable I'm, size. Yeah, that is very notable. Um, it's a lot bigger than uh, K plus 8. <laughs> yeah, John and Kate, and now John's not there. So, I guess if you had two batches of, the, of those, though, you'd be pretty close to my number. Maybe I should up it a little bit. If you had two octuplets. Yeah. Not impossible. All right, we'll up it to 50. Okay. Um, you said 1,119. Um, so it's 20 to go into 1,000. But 22. Say 22. Mr. Chana has 39 wives. Oh, my goodness. They live in a 100-room house, which I said, four stories, uh, and they have 94 kids. 39 wives. <laughs> so, Like with, right now? <laughs> he, has another, he has another 14 daughters-in-law and 33 grandchildren. So that's a total of, well, not that, uh, that's, that's 134 members of his immediate two-generation two family. That's eight, eight of those going to the pistol shrimps. Pistol, pistol shrimp. That's um. That's a lot of wives. It's like <laughs> biblical numbers of wives. <laughs> that was a that was a tumultuous measure up. Yeah, well, I got pretty good in the first time. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, <clears throat> let's talk about. Let's get into some more facts. Let's talk about mutualism. Since we learned about mutualism last week, we now come across another animal that shows mutualistic behavior. This time with another animal. Not only its own kin. Is this what I'm thinking of? Probably because I did the research. Maybe. <laughs> uh, the pistol shrimp often shares a burrow with a goby fish. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm not stepping on your uh, fins, are I? No. Okay. The shrimp builds the burrow and maintains it. Uh, the goby has good eyesight and alerts the shrimp to danger. Even when they leave the burrow, the shrimp will keep track of the fish with its antenna. If the fish spots danger, it will communicate with the shrimp with a special tail flick. So it's got its own little tail like dance for communicating with the shrimp. But the shrimp is a pistol shrimp, so it's a good thing the shrimp is it doesn't have itchy trigger fingers cuz like it like did you just punch me and then boom. Dead goby fish. <laughs> <laughs> nope. It's uh it's 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 got full control over its emotions. It's good. It's it's got a steel-eyed stare. <laughs> steely, steely Dan. Uh, let's talk about uh, the fact that it is eusocial in some uh, in one genus. One genus um, 
the Snephilus, which is, I think, we're, the Snephilophagus, the one we're in now. Snephilophagus, yep. Uh, displays, Snephilophagus pink floydy. Yeah. <laughs> displays eusocial behavior, like the naked, the naked mole rat. We talked about eusocialism mm-hmm. in that episode. Colonies live inside sponges with 300 members. It's a lot of snapping. It is. All of them are it's the like- offspring of a single large female queen, but they also may have... Um, one male offspring as well. They're not sure. Might be two parent system. It's like uh, three hundred kids. It's like a well attended poetry uh, reading. It's like lots of snapping. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the size. Like three hundred people would be at a well attended poetry. Reading. Yeah, that would I'm be like, a well attended. I don't think so. I think like like twenty people would be at a well. attended <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, three hundred would definitely be well attended. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Just not your typical... It'd be a packed house. Uh, You'd have to have multiple showings. So all of them are the... Off- oh, we already said that. The The colony is separated into two workers and a, and soldiers. Into workers and soldiers is way more than two. <laughs> <laughs> workers tend to tend to the young and soldiers protect the colony. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. They protect... They attack... Uh, they, they, they attack... But most importantly, they shoot snacks. <laughs> can, I, can I talk about the shooting snacks you part? You can. Go for it. All right. So here is where the fact gets major. Pistol shrimp get their name from being able to shoot a superheated bubble at their prey. And if you remember superheated bubbles from our mantis shrimp episode, you remember correctly, I guess. Yeah, sure. Um, they snap their giant claws. Well, they have usually have one big claw and one small claw as we mentioned and the uh, pink floydy has one giant fluorescent pink claw it snaps it shut so quickly that it creates a cavitation bubble just like the mantis shrimp um, which means that it's moving water away from water so quickly that it creates a bubble underwater without any surface air okay um, and then that cavitation bubble collapses and when it collapses it um it gets to be about 4,700 degrees Celsius or 8,500 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is about 1,000 degrees less than the surface of the sun. And um, it also creates light out of sound. Like it's so loud that is, there's sonoluminescence. Just right. like, so this is, this is, we've covered this in the mantis shrimp episode. Right. You can't see the light with the visible eye, but it does give off electromagnetic radiation just from sound. Uh, but unlike the mantis shrimp, Pistol Pete uses the cavitation bubble as a projectile and a primary means of hunting. So like the mantis shrimp actually tries to punch its prey and the cavitation bubble is kind of just like a happy byproduct that might stun the prey if it misses. But the pistol shrimp is actually shooting, throwing the bubble at, <laughs> at fish. So it can throw it uh, at 63 miles per hour uh, or 100 kilometers per hour a decent it's like a decent high school fastball yeah much faster than i can pitch something underwater actually no <laughs> not high school probably a, a really good softball throw um so but the heat is not what kills or stuns the fish it's the impact and the pressure from the sound of it so let's talk the about social impact is it like a whispering of something <laughs> terrible it's just like you just see his bubble like bloop 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 that kills Dumbledore. <laughs> <laughs> and the fish just goes belly up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, yeah, the impact from that sound just cuts to the quick. But let's talk about decibels. Decibels, how we measure the intensity of sound waves. So I have a question for you. What is louder? I'm going to name four things. Okay. Um, actually, I'm going to give you a list of things. Just to give you a loudest? reference, and oh, then okay. and then I'm going to ask you four different things and see if you can tell which one's is louder. So here's here's some decibel levels. A whisper is thirty decibels. Gotcha. Thirty decibels. Um, a lawnmower is ninety decibels. A rock concert is one hundred and twenty. A jet takeoff is one hundred and fifty. A shotgun is one hundred and seventy. A rocket taking off is one hundred and eighty. And sound waves become shock waves. At 191 decibels. Okay. So here are the four things that uh, I want you to put in order of decibelness. Okay. Um, a car horn, a revolver, 
an ambulance siren, and a jackhammer. So what's the loudest of those things? Um, working your way down. I have a lot of experience with everything except for the jackhammer. <laughs> Not a lot of experience. I've shot a, a handgun before. <laughs> and I've been in a car that beeps and near cars that beep. And I've been near sirens that are happening. Sirening. So the siren's loud because you can hear it like before you can see it and with your like everything closed. It's intentionally loud because they want to get... If you're listening to Pink Floyd, they want you to hear them. <laughs> They're like, hello, <laughs> is there anybody out there? Is that Pink Floyd? That's comfortably numb. Oh, okay. Uh, why does it sound like Bob Dylan? Because it's the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we go. So I'm going to say that it's either the jackhammer or the ambulance that's the loudest. I don't know. Guns are loud. Guns are an explosion. Gun. Gun's loudest. Gotta be gun. Okay, then what's next? Because the shotgun was almost <laughs> as loud as a jet. <laughs> it was 10 decibels quieter than a jet. No, it was 10 decibels quieter than a rocket taking off. A rocket? It was louder than a jet. <laughs> it was 20, 20 decibels louder the than a The gun. Jet. <laughs> the gun is loudest. Okay, so what's next? Uh, then it's the... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the jackhammer, then the ambulance, then the car horn. Okay, so revolver, jackhammer, ambulance, and then car horn. All right, so this is what the actual the actual numbers were. Revolver was first at 165 decibels, just shy of a shotgun. Um, the ambulance was second at 120 okay. decibels. My instincts were good. <laughs> I just didn't believe. Yeah, it was very loud. <laughs> ambulance is very loud. The car horn um, was after that at 110 decibels. And then at the end was the jackhammer. I guess people, you, I guess you think the jackhammer's louder because it's st- sustained loud sound. Yeah, that's why, like, the rocket. Because it, it really annoys you when it's happening. Or the rockets, yeah, they do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, it's like, the rocket's like a minute of 180 decibels instead of just, like, one revolver shot or something like that. So what we've learned here today, kids, is explosions are loud. Yeah, don't protect your ears if you're near a gun. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Can you guess what the decibel level of this cavitation bubble ex- implosion is? I forget. That's what right. 210 decibels. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I, I was trying to remember what you said was li- like made light. 210 decibels when a rocket taking off is 180. And then sound waves become shock waves at uh, 191. So this is 19 decibels above that. Some other things for reference is a blue whale was previously thought to be the loudest animal in the ocean, um, but it vocalizes a whistle at 188 decibels. Um, and, and that can be heard for miles. And uh, the meteor that hit Russia in the Tunguska area in 1908 um, was 315 decibels, and it's widely considered to be the loudest single event in recorded history. All right, so now you have an idea of how how loud this cavitation bubble is when it collapses. So right. um, that's why I call it the Sonic Slayer. Just the impact from this sound, um, not just the realization that Snape kills Dumbledore, but the actual impact from the st- sound waves hitting the, the fish um, stuns and usually kills smaller fish. And this, so the whole um, snap of the claw takes one millisecond and um, when pistol shrimp are in colonies or families of 300, like you said before, they interfere with sonar and anti-submarine warfare because, like, you have just the loudest things ever happening right there, just reverberating off of the water, I guess. That's bonkers. But can you imagine, like, being underwater and having, like, 25 of those 300 guys just snapping anywhere near you. Can you imagine? I feel like they could just kill you. I feel like enough of them could just shoot bubbles at you. And between the 8,500 degree (laughs) bubble and the 210 uh, decibels, you would just die. That'll leave some marks. It'll leave like a hole in your your heart. But can you imagine how appreciated a poet would feel if 30 of those guys were snapping for him? Yeah. Yeah. I'd be Pretty like, dang appreciate they would never hear anything again. <laughs> they would have to Beethoven it for the rest of their lives. <laughs> but that's all I got for the pistol shrimp. I 
forgot to mention at the top that Pistol Shrimp is also an excellent nickname for somebody who's scrappy but small. Yeah. Pistol Pete. <laughs> it's the Pistol Shrimp. It's like, <laughs> look, he's so angry. <laughs> it's like uh, it's Danny DeVito. <laughs> yeah, he's a Pistol Shrimp. <laughs> or um, uh, Joe Peter Pesci. Dinklage Joe Pesci. In, in Elf. Yeah, he's a Pistol Shrimp. Yeah. <laughs> You would not appreciate that. <laughs> Joe, Joe Pesci Joe Pesci is also a good pistol shrimp. All right, so for you out there in Podcastia, we were way over our time limit. Go blow some bubbles. Strut your colors. And let your doctor know if you've become comfortably numb, like the pistol shrimp in Life, Death, and Taxonomy. Just staring at us. It's uh, it's making me uncomfortable. I, I think I'm gonna say something. Uh, hey, Vespasian, I. Woo! Woo! All right, all right. Sheesh. Maybe he wants us to do something. Like what? Like subscribe to Life, Death, and Taxonomy on my favorite podcasting app? I've already done that. Maybe he wants us to spread the word about all the interesting animal info you can learn on LDT so that everyone can know about amazing animals instead of just you and me. Well, if he ever lets us out of this tree hammock he's built out of banana leaves and spackle, that's the first thing I'll do. Me too. Maybe we can... Hey, he's gone. How does he keep doing that? I don't know. But I'm getting out of here and spreading the joy of animal knowledge that shall be for all people. Sounds good to me. podcast <laughs> it only goes 65 miles an hour underwater sound travels faster underwater than it does in but the bubbles air. don't bubbles travel faster over the water <laughs> <laughs> that's not true either you got a really really high powered bubble gun then <laughs>